about 6 or 5. And welcome everybody. I know. I'm just saying both. That's what kind of serious. I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, review and approve the minutes. Anybody have any comments, questions, or edits on those? So you may have heard we had a, a little bit of a flood in pre-K, a little sink issue that um, the custodians, admin team, and everybody kind of showed up the fire department to kind of help us. So it was great. The preschool team was very flexible um, in setting up and unsetting up and setting up their rooms again. The good news about that is it helped us to prioritize in the floor replacement. <laughs> Yeah. So we are scheduled to have all pre-K floors replaced in the week of February um, right vacation. So right. those are news. yeah, those are scheduled and good to go. Right. Um, uh, we have a DA step performance coming in on February 13th, and this is brought to us in partnership with a diversity inclusion group, which is a community-based um, uh, committee, and uh, the PTA. So we're looking forward to that. Right. And we had a lockdown drill that was pretty successful, and we're looking uh, in the springtime to do a reunification during our early release. Right. So we'll do a, kind of a more hands-on drill. Yeah. Um, so there's many families that are kind of impacted with the nicotine um, addiction and with the introduction of vaping. And Scott Dredge has um, offered to come over and do an education for families, um, we're encouraging all sixth grade families. We're opening it up to the district, mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to host it here in Deerfield. So that's coming up. Look over here. I believe it's in May, but I'll get you the date if it's not on there. And then again, we have our social social justice workshop coming in with Sapphire. That's coming in on March 8th, and that should can work with our diversity leadership team, our faculty, and um, a little education for family component too. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on, it's got a classroom here, so let's go to the classroom here. So preschool, this, I said, well, this is going to have some beach and ocean ice cream shop. It was very entertaining to walk into a classroom that was flooded with a pool set up already <laughs> for the flood. <laughs> it's like, oh, good timing. It's like, oh, good timing. Uh, fifth grade, went to UMass and saw a play by Harry Tubman. It was kind of sketchy because we had a delay and we were concerned we were going to miss it, but luckily everyone had so they worked out funny and asked really for us to get there. Great. Yeah, and then fifth grade, uh, sorry, specials, we're doing some archery and PE. The Spanish, they did a 100th day parade and went down to the kindergarten and sang their 100th day song and they learned about body parts and things like that. So we were happy. Great. It's 100th day of school together, too. It is. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Were there any issues with the parents of pre-K folks during that sort of difficult week? I mean, yeah, it was, no, yeah. Very, yeah. Yeah. It was very flexible yeah. and understanding. It was nice. Yeah. Yeah. We kept one, one room open. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you both. Thank you. Uh, okay. Shall we? Should we move to financial statements? Sure. And I just realized that I emailed it, but I did not print it out because I was busy working out this Y20 budget, so I apologize for that. Um, but um, as I reviewed the results um, for the month of January, there are some um, lines that do have some deficit in them, deficit in them so um, mm -hmm. the goal will be to uh, stand with Tina uh, soon so we can kind of work through them and see how we can make those lines whole and make sure that everything is in a good uh, a good place in terms of uh, the overall budget operations. I don't see anything glaring. I think those are all things that we can certainly um, deal with by just transferring funds between lines. So I don't see anything that's going to cause panic or uh, any of that kind of business within that. I also have a set of wants for you to sign. So one thing I was going to ask about was electricity and uh, gas, because both of those seem to be going up and they're low right now. I mean, I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure when we pay the bill or do we pay it up front so we only have a little left and it doesn't matter or if we pay it 
paid out, you know, schedule wise, but looking at, um, I know that's, o that's always been a concern every year. And I know that just in town, we're dealing with that, you know, with the senior center, just getting hit with some, some pretty big mm -hmm. electricity increases and gas as well. So um, while you're talking that over, sure. you can look at that yep, as well. Absolutely. So what, what yep. we yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's my, uh, now that I've gotten here, the 420 budget um, put together is right. to just sit down and go through this with a fine tooth comb sure, and make sure you. that things are in good places. So. Yep. Okay. That's next on the to do list. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody have any questions? Further questions about that? Richard? No? Did you have a total on the five? I just didn't hear it. the total on the warrants. Um, there is not so far. There is not. Okay. And, uh, if that was not done, I can get a total for you. Let me come back my way. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any public comment tonight? No? No. All right. Um, okay, shall we move on to the main item then, which is the FY20 budget? Sure. Especially. This is literally hot off the press. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's either that or make it so small. No, no, <laughs> yeah, it no, looks no, pretty good. It. Yes, so I think <laughs> this is the easier way to take care of this. So um, this is where we currently stand with the thing. So um, certainly this is still a work in progress. Um, but uh, just to kind of give you the overview of um, where we're at the top page is sort of the 30,000 foot uh, uh, level of this. And um, you'll see some uh, increases in salaries, mostly because of um, Steps and um, there is a projection in there for uh, an adjustment. Uh, you know, we're still in the process of collective bargaining, so um, you know, uh, we need to have placed a number in there that obviously will change uh, as we go through the process with collective bargaining. Mm -hmm. Also, I know that Tina spoke to you at the last meeting about um, reducing out of uh, district tuitions and establishing a program with a special education teacher, that teacher has also uh, been programmed to work within the confines of this um, collective bargaining salary piece. Okay. Uh, the non-union uh, folks, again, it's in projected increases. Um, there's some change in your cost share with both the district and the union, and you'll see that in a couple of pages. Um, but also we had to take into consideration that any 12-month hourly paid employees next year will work a 262-day year, uh, in part because of leap year and one other day that I can't remember yeah. off the top of my head. So, um, administrative, there are some increases as well, again, projected increases to salary and some cost uh, share changes. The biggest thing that, that drove this one up was putting a uh, full-time business manager back into the budget as a salaried item because you had reduced the FY19 budget um, mm -hmm. to do that. So um, if you notice down when we get to the operational changes, um, there's a large reduction in finance and administrative services, and that's because the TMS contract will end on uh, July 31st of 2019. Um, I did move some um, money from uh, the curriculum director's expense, which is basically curriculum supplies to curriculum stipends. Um, stipends have been paid to teachers without necessarily a budget line in there. Mm -hmm. And as I did a look back over history, I discovered that not as much had been spent on curriculum development supplies. So I thought, if we're going to transfer funds, you might as well just budget for it out of the gate. So that's um, what happened. So we move curriculum supplies into curriculum stipends, and that actually shows up uh, on the very first uh, increase at salary line. Um, principal's office, um, Tina made a minor adjustment to um, 
discretionary expenditure, so that's why that changes their instructional materials. That looks like a big percentage, but it was a $5,000 budget with a $500 increase, so 10% is what it is. Yeah. Uh, instructional software, um, again, changes in your cost share, both district-wide and union-wide, um, has driven that down a little bit. Uh, instructional hardware is just kind of a minor budget shift. Um, it's essentially the same. Testing and assessment is down a little bit because of uh, the non-renewal of a license for a program that's no longer going to be used. Um, transportation, we have put a placeholder in for regular education transportation. Bus bids are due at the close of business on Monday. We will open them on Tuesday at 1 o'clock, and then we'll see where the dust settles and obviously adjust that number accordingly. Okay. Um, there is a reduction in um, transportation on the special education side because, again, with uh, not sending a child out, but rather bringing a child in here and, and establishing a program, that reduces the transportation on that side. And that's all one transportation number? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> and again, that's, for, and again that's for bidding purposes sure. as well. Yeah. We, yeah. Can, we can separate that out after we get the bid and we know exactly. Right. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, insurances, uh, some slight anticipated increases in health insurances. Basically, the Hampshire uh, Insurance Trust is not going to increase the rates, but we know that there's going to be some personnel shifts that may cause some changes in that regard. Um, also, um, the building uh, insurance, the vendor recommended that we increase that by 10%. I guess that has not been set yet. And, and liability and life insurance, uh, was the recommendation was 5%. Those rates have not been set yet, but that was his recommendation um, to do that. And then the other big decrease was um, the student returning to Deerfield Elementary, which drives down your uh, tuition in Massachusetts schools from $162,000 to $55,000. So that cost savings is obviously funding um, some of the other things. So the net change um, from FY18, uh, 19, excuse me, to 20 is $154,449, or at this juncture about 3.27%. Just um, a quick question on sure. collective bargaining. Do you know what, um, what is in there right now for for steps? Or what, <coughs> you, you said you included some money in there anticipating it. Do you know what that figure is yet? I am not at You're liberty not sure. to say so publicly okay. because of Perfect. the collective bargaining process. That's fine. So. Right. If, you guys, if, we, if we go to executive session, we can tell you what the number okay. is. Okay. And Just kind of the, the steps are the ones projected in the current. The steps are there. On the okay. current step scale, and then we'll put a percentage in that's. Right. Just not sure yet. It's reasonable to be. Right. Okay. Budgeted. Yep. <clears throat> Thank you. So the governor or House One budget has. Uh, come out, and so at the bottom of the sheet, I just thought uh, you might be interested in some of the revenue changes. Um, chapter 70, the final budget for FY19 was $1,104,883. Um, the projection in House 1 is an increase of uh, to $1,111,203. Um, school choice has been reduced pretty significantly, and that reduction actually happened in December of this year in impacts FY19 as well. So we are keeping our eyes on school choice and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's always an, an adjustment in December um, based on what happened at the end of the year prior and also the October 1 counts. So that's how that uh, has come across. There's been an increase in charter school tuition reimbursement because unfortunately on the top side there's been an increase in wiggling out. So you can see that in a minute. Um, so the total revenue is down by about $94,454 on the education side of the equation. So just again, uh, let you know where we are. Um, house 2, which will be the house's version of the budget, will probably come out sometime next month. That we usually do that in March. Okay. Um, the Senate usually comes out in May with their version. Um, it has been the practice over the past, I would say, five or better years for the legislature to do a higher Chapter 70 number than the governor does. Mm -hmm. So I think if we use the governor's number as a conservative right. underpinning of this whole process, I think that that's, that's a safe place to be because, uh, as we know, uh, this past year the governor did not sign the budget until somewhere in the middle of July. So, yes. um, you know, um, 
it's hard to know that, particularly going into the town meeting. Um, the next couple of pages are the total cherry sheets, and if I had had time, I would have recolored them cherry because if you're as old as I am, you remember that they are called cherry sheets because they used to come in mail in the mail on cherry pink paper, and your current superintendent is too young to know that. So, <laughs> so <laughs> well, these are blue. So you have all these blueberry sheets. Yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so um, this first page shows because in you know in the at the end of the day. It's all one big happy plot, the town and, and the school side. So it's always kind of good to know where the town also stands. So this first um, page is all of the estimated receipts. You can, you can see the chapter 70. Uh, you can see the charter to school tuition reimbursement having been increased there. You can see the decrease in school receiving um, uh, <coughs> school choice. Um, and then there's the, un the general government aid, and um, the general government side is up uh, a little bit in terms of uh, their anticipated incoming revenue. If you go to the next page, then you get to the assessments side, and this is what the town gets assessed by the state on. Um, so you can see all sorts of things, air pollution districts, and. Uh, you know, non-renewal of RMP surcharges and state assessments, uh, transportation authority, regional transportation, those kinds of things. Um, and you get down to the bottom of the page, you can see the sending tuition. School choice sending tuition is down, so not as many children are leaving Deerfield. That's good news. Um, charter school sending tuition is up a little bit, so uh, and you can see that and then uh, the tuition assessments overall are down to the town. So the town actually looks in overall, you look in fairly decent financial shape at this stage from uh, the state perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll see what happens as it runs through the legislative process. Mm -hmm. um, the next page is, um, again, taking a look at the student enrollment and what you are anticipated uh, percentages of the district and union uh, pieces of the budget are. So you can see that going from FY19 to FY20, that your uh, piece of the regional pie has gone down uh, a little bit. Um, it has happened across the board at the elementary level, and the population has shifted to the high school, so obviously the junior senior high, so their share of the pie has, has jumped a bit. Uh, if you look down any costs that are borne by just the union, again, you can see that uh, Deerfield has um, decreased ever so slightly, um, and Waitley has actually increased a little bit. So, um, the rest have decreased. So that's how all of those costs are factored is based on student enrollment and then that cost share is, is done. Um, the next page, because um, I'm also concerned at watching school choice and just making sure that you're in a good place and I am pleased to report that you are in a very good place in school choice uh, in Deerfield. Um, as you can see, there was a balance forward and some accrued payrolls from um, FY18 that led, leads to a net balance forward for this fiscal year of $916,289.28. Um, the anticipated revenue is $401,994, so that leaves you with a total anticipated revenue and the rollover balance of $1,362,283.28. That seems rather high. And that's down, but that's down 100 from last year, right? Because we were at... Uh, yeah, your last year was a 511. Right, so. we're down to 401. Mm -hmm. And that uh, balance forward has been uh, reconciled between our accounting office and your time accounts. So okay. That is a reconciled balance. So then I went into our uh, accounting software just to see where things had been budgeted and um, a so little bit of some more digging I need to do in there in terms of some numbers. You have a special education secretary who's funded from that account. Teacher salaries, um, I'm not quite sure how that number got in there, so I need to sort of dig a little bit. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of salaries that are not budgeted for as lines, but there's money being taken <coughs> against them, so that's what I need to un unpack um, there. 
uh, classroom uh, IA salaries. Those are these are things that are all budgeted for. And then there's um, an arts partnership, some IA salaries for um, special education, and then uh, general repair for buildings that was posted but has not been budgeted for. So again, those are things I need to dig into a little bit um, to figure out where we are. So when you take both the total budgeted expenses, there's expenses plus things that I'm beginning to see posted there. Um, if you take all that into consideration, your balance forward from FY19 into FY20 would be 881,236.28. You anticipate again the revenue from FY20, 401,994. You wind up with a totally anticipated revenue going into 20 of $1,283,230.28. Again, I need to work some more on the FY19 budget to kind yeah. of unpack why this looks this way. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I intend to do. Um, so just on basic things that we're trying to do within the budget, you can see uh, anticipated expenses of four fifty one two seventy eighty. Yeah. Um, so at the end of FY20, if all goes according to this kind of projection, you'd be around $832,000 to roll over, mm -hmm. which is a good place. The thing that I am watching with school choice, this is one of those things where they call you could fall off the funding cliff if you're not careful. So it's just something right. you want to be mindful of. Yep. Um, if you're looking at, say, your anticipated expenses for FY20, they are in excess of what's coming in. Right. So you're now beginning to pick away yeah, at that? what the rollover balance exactly. is. And yeah. back in days of yore, most people spent the accrued balance and didn't touch what was incoming. Right. Um, for That's that right. very purpose, at some point, at some point you reach that tipping point and then you're in trouble. So, right. um, so again, you're not there yet. But it's something you want to begin to become mindful of so that you don't wind up in that place where you're in a tipping point of now living hand to mouth as it were. Right. And then potentially running into a problem. And Ken, with your history that um, I remember the last business manager always said we would you know, we would always spend in arrears, she would call it. Correct. So mm -hmm. um, and this um, it, I, I'm looking at it <coughs> this is uh, <coughs> It's a little bit different format than we're used to seeing, right. um, but I'm looking at a difference of eighty thousand dollars in revenue this year versus expenses. Yes, mm -hmm. um, which is not what we originally budgeted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, so I, it, and I have to get into the back end of the software and figure out right, the, what was what. Right, the revenue shortfall. Well, a lot of what she did for us on school choice, I don't think, was in the was in the financial software. Mm -hmm initially because the software was just coming online, right? Um, so I'll have to go back and look at some notes myself to see exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. But usually we've, um, just so you're aware, we've always spent the preceding, or we've always budgeted based on the preceding years. Mm -hmm. FY19 numbers would be what we anticipate being able to spend in FY20, right. which is essentially what you've done here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I see that there's a sped position within the um, being shifted out as part of your projected salary increases. So, um, and we've always tended to have a, essentially a surplus of about 50,000, quote, surplus mm -hmm. on that spending plan mm -hmm. of about $50,000 that gave us flexibility. Mm -hmm. um, I've never seen it presented quite this way, and if we s start putting these kinds of numbers out, <laughs> um, Town fathers will begin to wonder and want us to spend the money that we've <coughs> avoided not spending before we get it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my biggest concern, as you're finding out this year. School choice is not being funded. It right. What ha has the state changed their funding uh, per student, mm -hmm. or it's just we have fewer choice students Correct. than anticipated? <coughs> Correct. And how it works is as once a number is decided in through October 1, there's another dip into enrollment in March, there's another dip in June, and then the following year, 
when the October 1 count comes out. They do it based on FTEs, total mm -hmm. days of membership in the school, mm -hmm. whether you're actually physically here or not, but total days of membership. So all of that, and if it's a special education student with right. an increment on top, that's also done on an FTE basis. Mm -hmm. So depending on who's in, who's out, when they came in, <coughs> when they left, all of that kind of factors into that mix. I know some years we wind up, you know, that that's our favor. That in June we find out, you know, we have a little bit more than we thought we did. Right. Well, Patty never included special ed projections. She always just based it on students. Okay. Uh, from my recollections, uh, so that there was a safety valve. Right. There was always something that some that goes in it. Right. But I have no idea what she did last year. Yeah. I just know the yeah. last chart we saw, I think we still had it. Well, we had a higher surplus than did. we had anticipated, mm -hmm. somewhere around 80 to 100,000, mm -hmm. as opposed to the 50. Right. Um, and without my notes here in front of me, I can't, I can't say exactly what it is. Yeah. Right. So again, so, I need to dig into this in a little more detail to be able to unpack mm -hmm. what all of these moving parts mean, but this is um, you know, what I have discovered at this particular point in time, but I just wanted to you know, make sure yep. that we're all kind of mindful of, of where we're at um, with regard to all of that. Okay. And then um, the last seven pages is uh, the budget and excruciating recap. Right. <laughs> line by line. Yep. Um, and um, so you can see each of the lines. Um, <coughs> work with TMS is we do something called an all funds budget, which kind of shows the total of what's been budgeted, and then you can see that there are some columns that show offsets against that. So right. for your purposes, you want to compare a blue to blue column, mm -hmm. um, so that way you're feeling like you know, you're comparing apples to apples. The pink column is just really showing you the totality. So um, for example, if we were to go to, and I need to, I want to explain a couple of things to you in a little more detail. Um, let's go to page three, for example. Because this is a, a very big difference. The classroom salary? Yes. Yes. And um, you will actually see this in the February results of operations. We need to take the people who are in the 2310 function, the specialist teachers function, which is uh, about halfway down the page or a third of the way down the page. We need to take and move those salaries into 2305, which is the function above it. We have gotten guidance from um, the Office of Finance at the State Department that they no longer want that 2310 to be used for regular salaries, but more for stipendy kinds of things. So the teacher specialist will actually move up into the classroom teacher line um, moving forward. Um, the adaptive PE, we will create a new line for that particular uh, piece and put that person there. The same thing with the special education teacher. We will actually create a new line within function 2305 and move those monies into the right places. Um, and this is just for the purposes of the end of the year reporting and that they are required for us. So we won't have to have any buckets for our end of the year reports so that they run smoothly and well. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can notice also within the teacher salaries, you can see that there's some offsets with choice, there's some with Title I, there's some with uh, SPED assistance grants, and there's some with early childhood revolving. And so that's how we get to, from the pink to the blue. So, but in your case, that's not how the budget was put together last year. So you're really looking blue to blue to make those comparisons. And the same thing down at the bottom of that page, when you look at the classroom assistance, again, the pink column looks pretty big compared to F-19. And when you look at the offsets, that's what um, that makes that shift. It just makes the budget a little more transparent, but you know where we're trying to find the things from so mm -hmm. that you can feel like um, you, know, you have a better understanding of where all the pots and money are going. Okay. And it's basically salaries that you're using other funds for at this particular juncture in time. It's not really uh, much of anything else. Um, so in answer to your transportation question, I'm on page 507, and if you look down to transportation, which is function 3330, um, almost to the bottom of the page, you can see uh, a, a placeholder in Increase in regional transportation, or um, 
you know, the trans uh, transportation budget for the school. Um, and uh, again, once we have the bids open and we know what that number is, that number will be uh, solidified. Based on past contracts and increases, it was running around 20% or so, so I just put that in there. Again, just as a placeholder, um, and we'll know more next week when that bid is opened. Uh, special education transportation has got up uh, an increased factor in it, but it's also got a reduction because of the student coming back to uh, Deerfield Elementary. Gotcha. Um, so that's the other big line item change. And then on the last page, page seven of seven, and down at the very bottom, you can see the decrease in the tuition in Massachusetts schools going from 162 to 55,000. And that's in part because of uh, the student aging out of this school, and in part because of bringing the student back. Number. So that's the number that's being used to help. Obviously, those numbers are being used to help fund the teacher um, to support that student and others here. And where are charter school tuitions following this? Is that the fifty-five thousand? The charter school tuition number is on the town side. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's not fall. It, at the regional level, it falls within Correct. the total budget, but at the town level, it falls on the town side. Right. And so what's the sort of in general percentage change uh, in here? Is that back on the first page? Yes, it is. No, no, no. So 3.27. Uh, Tentatively, right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. 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 That would been, that's been a direction of this board, right, for a little bit of time, trying to move some of those salaries out of school choice and on to. Trying to remember where we were at with that. We didn't do it last year, but we did it the year before. And I think we moved one salary out of school choice over in this proposed budget. Yes. Again, just being mindful of trying to. Mm -hmm. Stay. Yes. Stay the course of the school choice. Mm -hmm. So if we didn't have the student coming back, which is giving us a almost two and a half percent offset, we're almost looking at a six percent increase in overall operations. Right. Well, if the student weren't coming back, we wouldn't put in the extra teacher. Teacher, so right. And, uh, and it's mm -hmm. sort of a wash when you come right down to it. What's the extra teacher? Is to support the student who's coming. Moving it out of school choice back into the budget. Um, is this, no, no, or is no, it an no, added no, position? Added position. It's an added position, yeah. Can you just to support us? that student? Yeah, it's not just for one student. It was oh, okay. um, to kind of increase the continuum of services that we provide to the students that have their social, emotional, and trauma um, backgrounds to just be able to um, maximize and meet the students where they need. It just so happens that if we put a program in place, the student wouldn't have to go out the district. How many students? We've got students identified already that would benefit from this um, program. All Deerfield. All Deerfield students. Okay. I don't, and I don't have a sense looking at the budget. Like, are there other new initiatives or changes besides that, or things that are gaining or losing? No, it's all pretty uh, level funded, keeping everything where it is. We're just adding that for program to support. Well, that is there capacity in that program to take a student from another school? Yeah, that's a possibility. I wouldn't suggest it the first year of round. Understood. Yep, yeah, but just once you got on your feet, that is, it might that be is a possibility. Theory. That's kind of what we do with that. And how, would we, how would we determine it? What the other town would take. So. We have a late program now that we already have a kind of a set figure. I think Karen Fernia goes out and kind of sees 
what the other districts are paying. Right. Mm -hmm. keep it there. yeah. They're set by the, the state regulations. I just made that up, and Darius is correcting me. So you know, whatever. If you just say it, in a solid way. The so state. But the truth is, we already have programs in place. Yeah. 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 Yeah
look to me like we started mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. 401 through 17. Oh, 401 through It looks like a 17 number just for comparison. Yeah, but I'm looking at K6 subtotal of 358 in October and total these right now is 355. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't add up school choices, but um, I was just curious if we had students move out or... No, it's only. A, I think it's only a change of three. Well, oh, you added yeah, two. Yeah. You added yeah. But overall. Yeah. I mean, some have added, but. But. Yeah, I get that. I just. I, I was just curious. Um, having looked at the enrollment data last month, and just sort of keeping an eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trying to understand. So, anyway, just a curiosity. But thank you. So does you do have to put you here to. There's a number budget calendar. Mm -hmm. it's, not a, it's not a hand out, it was hand out a while back. Right. Um, but we have this February meeting, um, which timeline wise, um, you know, as we talked about the last meeting, usually we're here in January, and we have another a month to go through. So we, we kind of got shifted back. Right. Um, by a month. So the question is, with the adjustment of numbers, is this committee ready to have a public hearing on this? Um, and so I don't know. Um, so basically, March 6th is our next meeting. And yeah. the March 6th meeting is the public hearing for the FY20 budget. Right. So, and the normal pattern <coughs> I've been to yeah. this seat, but I've known yeah. the normal pattern in the yeah. district has been you have a you get a kind of you get a near your percentage point and you go through another meeting of adjustments and time to think it over and review numbers and right. that kind of stuff. And so so what I'm basically asking is do you want another meeting between now and then you know, to discuss or right. I don't I, I don't feel I don't really feel like you need to do that. I feel like you're gonna give us some updated Numbers which you could get to us just without having a meeting, yep. so we know what yep. they are. Some nice sheet like this. Yes. Um, and it doesn't sound like there's any sort of controversial big changes that often bring up more interesting debates yep. about program cuts or additions. Or, so I don't. Someone else can speak to it, but I don't know why we wouldn't want to keep moving along. And if there is, I would, you know, then if there is a big change, then we. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 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 And talk about it. Because you're right, it is it is a what we like to have is a boring budget. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But um, and then no boring would be nice. Boring is nice. Boring, but it's the way <laughs> just boring. We like our so school boring. meetings boring, we like our yeah. budgets boring. Yeah. yeah. We like school fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So I mean I think we I mean we've typically tried to get to around two and a half percent. Right. Which is that's 0.75 is uh, so we're finding thirty thousand dollars in this budget to get down to about two and a half percent right might be difficult um, given what was laid out so far um, <clears throat> but if, if we don't if it doesn't go up I'd be comfortable holding a public hearing next month what do you think Mary yeah I agree um, mm -hmm. It does go up, I think we should talk about it. Right. right. I mean, well, if it does go up, we're definitely going to be having to talk about it. Yes. And this, and, um, I'm trying to think of what the, I mean, I really, think, the yeah, I think the two things that probably will help most is my digging into school choice, yeah. and finding out what's behind those numbers and, mm -hmm. and how that impacts all of this. Um, as well as obviously the transportation bid opening will, you know, yeah. if it comes in less than what I projected, that's that be great. That's great, um, mm -hmm. and uh, that could be helpful certainly um, right then and there. Um, and then and the other big thing is South Wales. Right, right. That we don't want. No, uh, obviously. So. 
that's uh, that's going to take some time. So would you expect that if you needed to get down to two and a half, would you expect that to be presented at the next meeting at at around two and a half if it's possible, or would you go with what is it three point two seven now? I mean, I know it's probably yeah. going to shift some. I mean, once you have your public hearing, whatever number it is, is what's out there. Three, so. I would the 3.27 at the public hearing, and then, if, you know, see what. We could play out a scenario that says this what this, this is what potentially have. could happen at right. 2.5, so you'd know that. Right. And right. We could run the numbers both That'd ways. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, Tina and Darius and I could certainly work together to do that kind of scenario building. For you. Okay. Okay, all right. Sounds good. Uh, this is March 6th. Is the okay. March 6th, okay. 6 o'clock. Okay. That sounds right? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Yep. It is. It's the week. It's that week. It's that night we'll have to move the meeting. We will move the meeting. <laughs> Never you should have it. You are the chair. It's Never should have his privilege. You can't. <laughs> Although, you know what? Actually, you can't. Oh, you can't. Well, it depends on when you post it's the public hearing. Thank you. But if you're town, pausing right? it, this is the whatever one. So if. Yeah. That's um, gonna be, gonna be. Did you want it a little later, is that you're saying? Or earlier? Well, when do we have to post it, though? Well, the time can be potentially changed. I've got to post it on the paper, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm saying that as I know, I know the answer to that question, but I'm just saying I'm yes. to yeah. we'll confirm my love. But yeah, that's got to be posted in like two weeks or something. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. And then the, 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 you've got to run it twice. Right? I just know that. Oh, there won't be game time. We don't need to talk. No, first round. First rounds are Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday. And then it's Thursday, then and then whatever goes on Saturday. So. Wait, if your, son is a, if your son is a senior, and he's the point guard, you got to do some, there's a special I'm sure. He's a pioneer, too, so I got to ask you. These seniors take precedence. Okay. Well, I mean, they're only seniors yeah. once. Exactly. So. I'll write uh, check basketball. I'll call, <laughs> call Marty Sanderson, and we'll get the basketball schedule. <laughs> Okay. Do we um, have a, a further report from the superintendent besides budget stuff? For me? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I did a quick hand out to go through. Um, and I'll just kind of fire through it. The um, negotiation schedule is there. Um, we're a little bit further along with the IAs because the teachers um, had to uh, reschedule the last meeting, so we met with just the IAs. So, I mean, there's stuff to report on that, but we can. It's not um, proposals were exchanged, but there's no mm -hmm. real, there's no progress yet made on those proposals. But but if you want to go to the executive session, we can discuss that. Uh, so we talked about the contract. Uh, the bus contract is out there. I did a handout regarding the rural aid. Mm -hmm. um, just some different, just to keep you up to speed on what the different conversations are out there. Um, as you know, the you know the rural aid that happened this year, you know, was proposed at around 9 million and came back 1.5 and Deerfield didn't see any money. Sunderland saw just under 5,000. So it's not really, um, and so it was not earth shattering. There's a new push again to at least try to get that same amount back, but they're also looking at, there's a lot of schools that um, due to the changing the parameters didn't get any money. Mm -hmm. And um, schools that are in less rural areas, but are in need of their very straps and some of neighbors to the north that didn't get, didn't get a cent as well. So um, I, I attached to the email of the new formula that they're just thinking out there. It's just food for thought to keep you in the elevator conversations with other school committee members throughout the valley, kind of <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, that's what that's there. Next school meeting, uh, we also have to do school choice. And so um, we'll have to vote on that next committee meeting and the business manager for um, next year has been posted. And my timeline is to post for this month, go through the interview process for March so we can bring it to the joint session where everything must be go smoothly in April. That's the timeline there. 
factors. Okay. So I know we haven't voted um, on your contact contract yet, but I want to congratulate you on Thank you. publicly uh, at our meeting here uh, on the secure position as our superintendent for quite a few years now. I'm very excited for that. Thank you. So yeah, that's it's happening Tuesday. Tuesday. And I apologize to pull you guys out on another night. It's okay. But it was back and forth with the attorney, and by the time we realized that the whole committee had to vote it before the chair signed it, yeah. it was already we missed the posting date for Wheatley and Sunderland that already happened because the town office is being closed. Yeah. yeah. So this meeting could probably get pull it off, but yeah. And so. you you should be receiving a copy of the negotiated contract. Okay. That's been that has been agreed to with Darius by myself and Bob Howe as the chairs of the respective committees. Yep. Uh, we will send that out so that people will have a chance to digest it before okay. the meeting. I will not be at the meeting. All right. I'll be out of town, but um, okay. um, there's a, there will be a quorum present. If you have questions when you get the contract and want answers, just give a call to myself or Bob. Okay. Or Darius. Yep. Uh, but it was a very smooth conversation. That was point of view. That was point of view. Oh. <laughs> yeah. questions. That's good. Turn my back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, feel free to give a call and that can explain okay. if you have any concerns. But it's in line. It's a five-year contract. Yep. Um, there's no wrinkles. It's basically changing the wording on the interim contract that was issued and eliminating the meetings clause out of the addendum. And uh, he felt confident enough that he was, has been able to sort of set things up. And yeah. Once negotiations die out, his schedule next year would be uh, more in keeping with what he hopes to find. Good. So, um, so that's exciting. Mm -hmm. that's it. Great. Thank you for doing that. Oh, yes. Um, okay. So, we're going to vote to adjourn unless anybody wants to go to the executive session. Okay. All right. So, motion to adjourn. All right. So, vote all in favor. Yes, we are here. Great.